But when I make butter, I decarb one time in the oven before I decarb in the crock pot. Is that necessary to do it in the oven when you're cooking it? At least I did four hours in the crock pot. No. No, I, I, uh, my way is I do, uh, I decarboxylate in the oven. I go, and everybody is like slightly different, everyone, and like we just talked about, you can figure out what works for you, but I think the general rule is 220 degrees for 25 minutes. That's what I go with. Um, and I don't cover it. Uh, I know some people do. Um, and then I'll, then add the flour to the butter or the oil and the water if you're doing it in a crock pot. Right, I meant like when you do it in the crock, you're making coconut butter or uh, can, can, uh -huh. can of butter. And you, I decorked in the oven first in yeah. the tin, and then I put it in the crock pot and decorked more making the butter. You don't need to do that, really. Um, no. Decarboxylation is just a one-part process. Yeah, so, good. yeah, if you're putting it in a crock pot, the heat from the crock pot, as long as it's at 212-ish, yeah. uh, will start to activate the cannabinoids. So, so. if I went for more settings, if I just leave it longer than four hours? But if you're, if you're growing your, yeah, but if you're growing your own at home, you might want to experiment a little bit because that deep, initial decarb could change the product that we talked about. So you may be able to come up with different products uh, that treat different ailments that you have if you if you do that process differently, but you don't have to. And second question that is good, the consistency. I tried making cookies and I know your body is different every day according to how you ate or exercise, but I think I must have gotten more THC in one cookie than another because one night uh, you get hit with the same amount. And the next night I don't even feel it. So, it's very important to um, emulsify the medicine um, often uh, when I um, when I make butter for edibles I'll make a big batch of butter and then melt it all down and then I bought molds but um, silicone molds right off of the internet and I use a measuring uh, tablespoon and I put a tablespoon into each one like an ice cube tray and then I have the results of my testing so I know that sometimes my butter patties will be 300 milligrams for one tablespoon. So then I'll add, I'll melt that and incorporate that into my regular butter. And then it's always about incorporating, incorporating, incorporating and using molds. So, I mean, it's very easy to do is to get a mold or to get um, different size dishes like an ice, cube, uh, ice cream scooper. And every single time you flatten it out, it's the same size and, you know, that's the way to go. See, I put it in a whole bunch at the beginning, like you make a batch of cookies, I can chew the oil and everything and beat it, beat it, so I don't think it got all stirred together. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> I'm also finding it's a fancy word for stirring it, really. So if you keep it stirring throughout that whole process, your doses are going to be pretty on point. Thank you for that question. Another question. Well, I have a question about uh, decarb, and my experiment with uh, with the weed goes back many decades before I'd ever had occasion to hear of decarb. And I'm well aware that if you put a piece of a slice of fresh bread in the in a hot oven, it's going to turn into a crispy critter nobody's going to want to deal with. And I want to know, and, and so that mystifies me completely about wanting to put it in there. And, you know, it's going to smell like uh, like mother's apple pie, but it's going to come out being no more than a, a crispy sun-bleached corn husk left, left in the oven for so many hot minutes. And I, I that I fail, I fail to understand that, but I, I want what I want to know is like now I'm really into the uh, vape bag, and does the decarb take place when you do the uh, vape bag? Um, I'll just to the part of, uh, hold on, um, <laughs> so typical, like, what would you tell you about? <laughs> <laughs> I think what you what was the question? No, okay. <laughs> How is, if you're, are you asking if uh, decarboxylation and, and vaporization do the same thing? Is that, is that what you're asking? Oh, I know what I was going to say. I'm back on track. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, back. with relation to food, like you talked about a piece of bread turning into toast and 
trying to figure out that relationship to why you would decarboxylate the uh, cannabis. It's likened to if you have ever um, cooked a curry or mm. something that has a lot of spices and seeds and stuff where you would toast the seeds and the spices and it draws all, all of the oils out of it and then you get the most out of those uh, spices. So it's sort of that idea that bringing in the heat brings all the medicine up to the top of the plant for extraction. Oh, thank you. What, what, in the, what about, say, if you do a vape bag, is that enough heat to um, bring out those oils? And is it, they're is an it? exact heat. That's the, that's the beauty of vaporizers, is if you get a good one, you can set it to the exact temperature that you want for the product that you're putting into it. So whether you're vaping oil or tincture or flour, you can, you can tell it the temperature that uh, activates the cannabinoids the best and get the best results from your medicine that way. Uh, I'll have to uh, readjust my vape bag. Thank you. Amen. I'd like to mention along those lines too that the vaporization point of THC is 319 degrees. It starts at 319 degrees. There's a range of vaporization temperatures for every compound. So if you don't want to vaporize your cannabis out of a batch of brownies, for example, as uh, my friend here said, you, you want to keep the temperature below 300 degrees while you're baking for the most part. Um, the vaporization temperature for cannabidiol is higher than that, um, as, as is uh, demonstrated by the higher temperature of decarboxylation as well. So. so you don't want to go over that temperature even when you're baking your actual edible. Once you're beyond the decarboxylation, even when you're in your baking process, you don't want to go above 300. Well, and your product, your batch of brownies, cookies, or whatever it is, is probably not going to reach above 300 degrees because that would mean that all of the water has evaporated and your product is burning at that point. So for the most part, um, setting your oven lower just helps uh, the temperature of the product itself come up slower. Um, but it doesn't, it's not going to ever come up to the temperature that your oven is actually set to. And to add to that, that's why we'll, we'll use these different methods of using, you know, an oven for one uh, plant and then maybe the crock pot for another plant. Um, the activation, you know, temperature is all different for these different types of cannabinoids. So maybe you would activate one in the oven and then use the other in a crock pot, uh, the THC, because you don't need to activate it because you're going to get it to that temperature anyway. So I thought it. I just want to make one point. What if you light something that technically decomposes? So when you light a joint, when you light a brown, anything that you smoke, you add flame or heat to it. That's the act of decomposition. Does that answer your question a little bit better? Yeah. Thank you guys. I appreciate everything. If you want to just do a quick one last hurrah, whatever you guys want to say, right down the line. Thank you. I just want to say thank you very much for having us. And if you have any questions, we'll be well I'll be hanging around for a little while, and I'm happy to answer any questions. I also want to say thank you, and please come over to the Love Grown booth and pick up one of these medicine tracking journals so that you can make copies and start a dialogue with your physician, with your other providers, because this really quantifies your symptom relief for them in a way that they can understand, and then you can have that conversation about how well your cannabis is or isn't working. It helps to move movement forward. So I'd just like to repeat what we've heard several times today, go low and go slow. Um, and an overdose of THC is not a pleasant experience. You will get through it, take deep breaths. Um, citric acid can help to reduce the effects of too much THC. Chewing on peppercorns can help um, if you chew on uh, grapefruit. Make sure you chew on the pulp. Those things can help to reduce those symptoms. Um, but the best thing that you can do is to make sure before you even start to make your own edibles that you know what your dose is and you go, go to somebody who does testing, who knows what the dose, figure out what that is before you start playing around with your own medicine. So thank you guys for being here. I appreciate your energy and wanting to learn. I just want to say I'm proud that this is an all-woman panel because we worked really hard to get here. Um, 
Um, we're here for you guys, so don't feel like we're untouchable. My name is Melissa. I work at the Thomas Slater Compassion Center in Providence. Rhode Island is not that far. Uh, we all have internet and email, so reach out to me. I'm happy to send you any of the educational information I have to work with you guys um, and see how we can all work together and continue to create this unity in the community that we have built up so well. So thanks for being here. Thank you guys. You've got a great audience. If you have any more questions, Grassley's table is right over here.